have an idea. So yeah, thanks for being here, everybody. Um, and thanks panelists for making time out of our busy days as parents and performers and all of that good stuff to share our experiences and knowledge with the community at large. Um, yeah, so I'm Lotus Lane. I'm your industry relations advocate here at FSC. And I am so, so grateful to have this beautiful panelist here with me speaking with me. So I'll, I'll go in order of who I see on my screen. So um, Jesse and PJ, if you want to introduce yourselves, please. <laughs> I'm Jesse Sage. I am an uh, independent performer and a sex worker. And I, with PJ, run Peep Show Magazine now. So we have a podcast and um, a website uh, that shares news and stories from the sex industry. And um, I'm also writing a book on sex work and parenting and life for West Virginia University Press. Oh, and by the way, how many kids do you? Do we all have? I'll say uh, I'll go first. I have one 13 year old. <laughs> we have a 19 year old, a almost 16 year old, and a four year old. So we have a very full house with lots of ages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'll just say I'm PJ Sage. I uh, perform alongside Jesse and um, also just finally got a PhD. Um, so I'm starting to also. Uh, teach college now and I um, have the great fortune of teaching on gender and sexuality and getting to teach sex courses about sex work and sex workers so uh, it's a nice transition I'm in the pro the middle of. <laughs> <laughs> I love knowing that about you I didn't know that that's cool um, and next we have uh, T.S. Foxy. Oh you're on mute you're on mute. Ah, unmute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I'm not very technical, so <laughs> I hardly do Zoom. I was just with the kids during um, last year, and I'm like, oh my God, how do I do this Zoom thing? And I'm like, okay, so I'm still new at this, so. <laughs> but I am T.S. Foxy, well, Foxy, but I have to put the T.S. in there. Um, I'm a trans performer, entertainer, and sex worker. And I have five adopted kids that we raise. So they range from now five to 13. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm all... <laughs> And then I have Mickey as well, Mickey Maud. Hi, uh, I'm Mickey Maud. Uh, I'm a performer. I've been in the industry for, for a little bit, almost um, almost 14 years. I did the math the other day. Um, I have a three and a half year old and um, one on the way. So, um, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, congratulations. <laughs> right. Thank you. Just um, found that out. Um, been doing the, the IVF thing. So it's been a, it's been a long process if anybody's familiar with that. Um, yeah, that's me. Congrats, congrats. That's very cool. And then last, definitely not least, Miss Gia DeMarco. Hello, I am Gia DeMarco. I am a uh, adult performer, um, content creator, uh, sex worker, dominatrix. I'm an all around, uh, all encompassing sex worker. I've been in the industry since 2006 and shooting for mainstream companies since 2009 and then just doing various sex work through the years. Um, and I have two children. I have a son that just turned 18 um, and it's like, <laughs> still feels strange to say that. And then I've got a, a six-year-old as well at home, so. Sweet. I love yeah. hearing all about um your families because it's like I, I knew things about you but I'm learning them right now even myself on the <laughs> channel so thank you so much for being open and sharing about our lives as parents um so let's just get right into it um one of the main questions we are ever asked or are always asked is what would your kids think what do your kids think about what do you do so I mean are there those among us that have told our kids explicitly what we do and and how do you disclose that what words do you use to explain that anyone can go first 
I see you guys shaking yeah. your head, Jess. Go ahead. <laughs> we can <Get> go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our kids are older, or two of them are older. So we told them four years ago, something like Sounds that. Right, yeah. Like, um, we weren't actually intending on it, but I ended up um, getting asked to give this talk in my city about sex work. And I didn't know this was a big event when I said yes. And then suddenly the organizers were like, hey, our publicity team is gonna get in touch with you so we can publicize the event. And I was like, wait, what? So, <laughs> so I realized that like I had to tell the kids because they were gonna find out because this was an event that was being like publicized. So we sat down, we took the kids out to dinner and the funny thing about this is that we took them out to dinner to the same place where we told them that we were going to have their little brother so when we got there they were like are you pregnant and I was like <laughs> no we're not pregnant um we're we do porn and they were like oh okay and from thinking that I was pregnant to that it seemed like not very exciting to them they were like oh you have a job okay all right this doesn't really affect us so that like we don't even have that good of a story because it wasn't for for the kids at least it wasn't a big deal it became a really big deal for people out like our extended family when it trickled out there it was a very big deal that was really hard in our family on both sides of our family but for our kids i think because we raised them yeah that, not to that, approach sex with yeah. a lot of shame and to have respect for sex workers as yeah. well even before we sort of you know came out to them um, I don't think yeah, it was. No, it was like not a big thing for them. And the oldest one is 19 now. And I think that I, well, I know that like, I talk to him like more specifically now that he is an adult about the sort of work that I've done. And we're a little more vague with the younger ones, but like we, we still talk to them. That's very cool. Can I just ask, um, how long were you guys doing sex work before you felt, oh, I have to tell them because this event is happening? A couple years. A couple years. Probably two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. We were camming, you know, and then yeah. we we were doing it kind of part time, and we also were getting Jesse in particular was doing it more full time around. The up the time we had yeah it so yeah. it was like at that point that it shifted that our whole like lives shifted from like this is something we do on the side to like we have to embrace this and if we're going to embrace it we might as well like make it our full-time thing and so I think at that time that was around yeah I guess like four years ago my whole life changed and like sex work in all the forms that I do it became my primary job you still have a job that's outside of sex work, but I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, Foxy, did you want to tell what what it is with your family situation? Yeah, um, my mother, she ran a, a Planned Parenthood clinic. So I we were very open about sex and self-educating myself. So it's kind of like we brought the kids up that way as well, where we teach them about different genders and, you know, this, you know, all this about sexuality and the reproductive system. And, you know, we're just very open um, sexually um, with our kids. Um, but they don't know that I'm trans yet. And I haven't spoken to them about what I do for um, my job, they know that I model, they know that I, I do films that, you know, they know that I travel and leave, but they technically don't know exactly what I do. So exactly. it's still, I don't, I don't think I would tell them until they're a little bit older, maybe right. 15, 16, where they're a little bit more understanding. The younger ones, they don't know. They just, they're like, can I go with you? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'll be right back. I'll be back on this day. <laughs> And they're like, I want to go. And I'm like, no. But um, yeah, I still haven't really thought of how I'm going to say it. I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> so that makes yeah. a lot of sense because you do have younger children. And, and I feel like when they are older, like Jesse's and PJ's and my 13-year-old now, that's a teenager, it's, it's a little bit easier to have that kind of conversation mm -hmm. about things. But that's good that yeah. you have those conversations about sexuality and gender across the board because it's almost like that prepares them in a way mm -hmm. to not be shell-shocked, right? Yeah, and they're, they're so like, 
I don't I don't want them to be like, oh my God, you know, there's boobs and oh my God, they're naked or oh, they're kissing. And so I tell them about, you know, the the difference between, you know, the gays and the lesbians and the trans and, and they're learning. I, they watch YouTube. I put YouTube on for them and, you know, they talk about a lot of stuff like that. So YouTube helps me a lot. <laughs> They'll pay attention to YouTube more than me. They're like... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Gia, did you want to give your story of if you disclosed to your children or not? Yeah. So when I had my older son, I was really young. I was 19 and I started doing sex work when he was about, um, gosh, I think he was about four or so. And it was really, you know, it was really different back then. I actually, even, even in the industry, wasn't very open about the fact that I had a child. It was definitely, I think, a lot more stigmatized. There were a lot of things that were a lot more stigmatized, you know, 14 years ago. So um, I kind of hid, I definitely hid him from the industry. Um, and I didn't, I was really young and I wasn't really, it was just a very different time. So I wasn't really quite as comfortable having that conversation with him. And then the older he got, um, it's like we weren't having the conversation. So I wasn't really sure, you know, should I have it? Should I not have it? And then, um, you know, I, I, it was kind of just, it was kind of sort of disclosed to him and by another family, I was kind of outed by another family, the other side of the family a little bit. And so he's a very, uh, you know, he doesn't like to talk about things. He's very just like, it's fine. I don't care. Kind of, you know, stoic um, guy. So young man now. And so now that he's 18, um, and I would, I feel that I'm, I, I would like to sit down and have a conversation with him. I'm just nervous about, you know, I, I'm, pr I'm pretty positive he knows, um, but I just don't know the best way to approach it. Um, and how to really, you know, explain to him. I mean, for me, you know, my, my thing has always been, well, this is why I did it. It was so that I could stay at home with you and still earn a living. And that's kind of, you know, I don't feel any shame about that. Um, so that's kind of where I think I will start the conversation with him. And then as far as my six-year-old, he is uh, too young to, to understand those things. But like Foxy was saying, you know, we're very open about sexuality and about, you know, he knows how babies are made and he knows, you know, we are not ashamed of our bodies. And it's like, you know, we talk about, you know, having time alone and the, you know, the private time, those things. And um, it's just really cool because he's growing up now in an age where, you know, he, it's, he doesn't bat an eye if he sees two boys mm -hmm. kissing or holding hands. So I feel that it's going to be um, once he's at a more appropriate age, um, I'm starting to, I am starting to tell him, you know, mommy, you know, takes sometimes I think he had seen like a, a, a print like a photo of, of me or something and um he was like wow you look so so beautiful and I said yeah sometimes mommy takes pictures for her job you know and that's pretty much that's as far as we've gotten into it with him um because I do have another job outside of sex work and so he knows I do that um but I'm kind of starting to say yeah mommy yes like sometimes mommy travels a little bit and, you know I take pictures and so um that's as far as I've gotten with him because I think that's a, that's pretty age appropriate. So it'll be an easier conversation that um, I do want to have with him when he's old enough. Yeah. Sounds like you're on the right track, Gia. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm laying the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing. And um, Mr. Mickey, um, I know you have babies. <laughs> but do you have like a, a plan, an idea of like what you think you're gonna do or when you plan to talk to them? I mean, we well, all have plans. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think we've kind of already started in terms of kind of like age, age appropriate. Like, you know, my my child is, is three and a half. So there's like conceptual things that like we can grasp. We can grasp kind of like, you know, relationships and that like relationships look all sorts of ways. Like you can love one person, you can love multiple people. Like, you know, um, talking about like, work and what like work is and having you know respect for all sorts of like types of work um you know we're on these kind of very very basic concepts and we've been thinking about like how are we going to like you know have that conversation and i think we are trying to like i guess lay the foundation so that conversation is kind of um you know jesse and, and pj kind of talked about like it's just like oh okay and then you know that that's it um i i think 
the hard part, um, you know, and kind of based on our experience of, you know, um, being outed in our case by like social media and that kind of um, having the sort of um, negative impact where we didn't talk to like uh, my partner's family for the entire time that we were pregnant um, and that being kind of difficult. Um, talking about like, um, how do we like, how and when do we disclose things to other people around and how that might impact um, our child's life. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's something that has been kind of as, you know, child is starting to kind of go through preschool. Um, those are the sort of conversations that we're kind of having right now about like, how do we, how do we kind of deal with like the perceptions of other people that might impact our child's life? Right. That's actually very next thing that I'm about to ask is how do you talk to other people's uh, parents, like maybe the friends of your kids or, you know, like Jesse and PJ were saying, the other family members that may have the bigger issues with it. Um, because that that is very real. Like those people affect your kid's life too, um, the way they perceive you. I know for myself, I always had a very you know, strong awareness of the way that I would be perceived, single Black mother, and then on top of it, I'm doing sex work, and I have all these tattoos, so I was very conscious in the early years of my kids' elementary school to always wear long sleeves and appear very dowdy, like it was like my alternate evening, <laughs> just laying yeah. the plain one, you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested to hear how do other people navigate that? And I'm sure the audience would love to know as well, tips um, and tricks. Cause I really love what, what everyone just said, especially Mickey laying down the foundations as early as three, because you know, they grow up so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I can uh, chime into this because this is something that's been like very hard in our life where like we, when we were outed um, as well to family members. And when that happened, the kids had to watch. And this I think was hard on the kids than anything else like us go to family events and people would get up and walk out of the room like when we walked in and the kids um the older ones would be like would talk to me about it and would say like I um that they were uncomfortable with the fact that like all of the extended family was treating us the way they were and they knew what was going on because they it was like very obvious well, they're making that, a scene about it yeah right? like not yeah. yeah we weren't everybody else was and you know my kids would say things like oh well grandma's still mad at you because of your job I think that's you know stupid blah 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 but we've kind of this is you know been years we've gotten to a place where people don't walk out of the room when we walk in which is you know good um but I think um, that was really hard on them. But one of the things that I was really like very conscious of was that I didn't want to tell the kids not to tell anybody because I felt like if I did that, first of all, it kind of like imbued it with some shame and I didn't want to do that. But also like if they're struggling with it and they don't feel comfortable telling me that they're uncomfortable with my job, I want them to be able to like talk to somebody. So I didn't want to cut them off. Um, but I also wanted them to know that like there is social ramifications for telling people. So it was interesting because, um, and we're like the first two are from my first marriage. So we're also in like a split custody yeah. situation, which is complicated. Our little one is PJ and mine and the older ones are from my first marriage. And, you know, I never told them not, not to tell their dad or not to tell anyone, even though I was like very nervous about that whole situation. But, um, you know, I recently interviewed my oldest one for a Trist article that I wrote about what it was, since he's an adult now, about what it was like for him. And one of the things that he said is that he by himself decided not to tell people because when he had told like therapists at one point, you know, something about it, he could sense their judgment. And he just decided not to tell people that he didn't, you know, trust. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that he had been making those decisions because I hadn't told them not to do that. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see like how they pick up on, even if it's not coming from us, they pick up on like the judgment of other people and then have to kind of navigate that. And it's making me think with the younger two um, that I'd like to be a little bit more explicit about that with them because the older one 
even though I didn't tell him not to tell anybody was like making decisions kind of on his own about how to do that. And we could have maybe helped him a little bit. Yeah. And I'll just say, you know, one other thing is, I mean, we, we don't live in like a big coastal city. We live in Pittsburgh, you know, like Midwest, Prosper, you know, <laughs> um, it's a small city to begin with, but it's, you know, um, maybe a little bit more culturally conservative. And honestly, we kind of keep to ourselves where we don't have a lot of relationships with um, people in our neighborhood and, you know, thank God for social media, but um, it's, you know, I, I don't, and a part of that is, is I think it's, you know, we just don't necessarily want to deal with that, but it's always been kind of hard. It's not even just porn, like being first boyfriend, then stepdad, I was already stigmatized very like, you know, um, aggressively by a lot of people when the kids were in elementary school. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we just kind of have relationships outside of our community and mostly stay anonymous here <laughs> yeah. to the degree we can. That. I mean, yeah. especially like you said, with the small town mentality, um, I mean, those of us that do live in coastal cities, I live in LA, I, I recognize that I do have a privilege of people being in the entertainment industry around me. Um, so I, I've actually never been questioned in the way that I know I would be if I was in my, my hometown of mm -hmm. Bakersfield. Um, Cause that was the first thing people would ask is what do you do for a living? What do you do? And, and it doesn't happen as often in LA. People let people just do their hustle without getting in their <laughs> business and I don't need to know. <laughs> so that's, that is one thing I can definitely say um, I benefit from and I'm sorry that you have to go through so much BS out there because that does suck and to have to feel isolated but thank goodness for Twitter yeah <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> does anyone else have any um talking points on how they deal with um maybe the other people's perception of what you do if they know or if you've ever had to kind of hide that or navigate that for the sake of your kids yeah I mean I when I when I was with my older son when he was younger and you know I started doing sex work um I did lose a lot of, I guess, friends, you know, and there was a lot of judgment there, which, you know, now I look back and it really it doesn't matter. Um, I have a small group of people in my life that I've curated at this point that do know what I do. Um, mostly friends, uh, a couple of family members that know, and, you know, it's really not a big deal. It's not like this big, like, Ooh, I want to know. We, I can talk to them about it and, and tell me funny stories that happen on set or things like that. But it's, um, it's taken a long time to get to that point. And I am very cautious with my younger one, um, you know, with play dates and things like that, because like, like you said, it's always the first question is, well, what do you do for a living kind of thing? And so, you know, I don't, I really try to not lie about it. You know, I just say, you know, I do video editing, I do content management. I, you know, do a lot of social media, you know, things like that. And these are all true things. So those are kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, and you just kind of have to learn to, I think I, for me to gauge what, you know, where people are at, I do realize that some people, you know, when maybe some parents of, you know, my younger ones, friends would just not, you can't play with, you know him anymore so kind of thing and then there are others that would probably be more open we luckily um i live in a big city but it's also it's it's a little more um i know a little more anonymous i guess you know i i don't it's not I, I i go out you know my normal clothes i don't go out you know like your lotus was saying like i kind of dress down i make sure that i don't you know which is unfortunate if that's another issue it's unfortunate that we have feel we have to do that but i do choose to do that especially at school functions and you know kind of you know desexualize myself um just because i never know especially having you know tattoos and being, you know, I don't, I don't know who might know or who doesn't. Um, fortunately, I haven't had any really bad experiences uh, with my younger one and his um, parents, you know, of his friends. So I think that I just, I just kind of gauge it and see, you know, how people, the things they say maybe and see where they're at with their yeah. own opinions on sex and how maybe, you know, maybe how loose and free they are, I guess, um, yeah. before I open up about anything. Mm. Very, very yeah. 
making yeah. sure that, that is something that I'm, I'm I'm navigating too as starting to like you know younger ones and like play dates and like you know I feel like when I was a kid, OPP meant something completely different than other people's parents. And, uh, <laughs> you know, now this sort of like, I do that sort of vague filtering thing that Gia does. I'm like, oh, I work in like, you know, entertainment. And then, it, you know, you kind of go down like getting more specific and you see where people's like interest kind of are. I feel like so far it's been this sort of thing where like um, people haven't dug down too deep and I've only recently started telling people that I've like you, you know before we had kids it was like we had this curated group and we were like okay like you know what we do you and you care or you don't care or it's like you know a big deal well you know fuck you we're not gonna hang out with you and like we can kind of keep that separation and now we kind of have these um you know people that are in our lives because of like you know the connection that our kids have and um yeah it's it's this sort of thing where we're kind of constantly trying to like all right is this person going to be cool how cool they're going to be or um you know this hasn't happened yet but it's happened you know before we had kids of like people who are like too cool about it and then like or like you know Mine's that's all they want to talk about right yeah, yeah. <laughs> or their their sex therapist or i'm like I'm not an expert. I just do what I do. You should probably talk to a licensed medical, prof you know, you know, professional about that. Um, and yeah, and I mean, we're we're still kind of you know in this sort of like figuring it out sort of stage as well. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like Gia said, and like Mickey, like you kind of have to reword everything just to you know avoid opening a can of worms. Mm -hmm. So I too just say that I'm in the film industry um, and I say film production. So it sounds a little bit less than, because if they say film or entertainment, they're going to be like, oh, okay, what, what part of the film? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, I'm in the production part. So, you make it you know, sound too technical, then they're like, oh, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're pretty, we're pretty private. My mom likes to stay pretty private, so we were raised on being private. So same with the kids, you know, it's like, you know, whatever stays in the house, you know, doesn't go leave the house. And, you know, we're very, we're very selective on our friends and our circle of people that we hang with. But most of the part, our family is very open-minded, very open. Uh, some of you have met my family member, like my mom, my brother, and yeah. sister-in-law. They're just they're very loving, open arms, you know, but when it comes to like the public, you know, we don't get too involved with like PTA and neighborhood watch and all this stuff because <laughs> that's too nosy, you know, like they really get down and they want to dig yeah. in and figure you out. So yeah, we stay, we avoid that stuff, but mm -hmm. for the most part, yeah, we stay pretty private. But that's cool that I did notice you do have your very cultivated close group of friends. Um, and I think that's one of the things that helps as a parent is having that close knit group of support and friends that you can actually um, depend on. Um, and I would just like to give a shout out to you, Foxy. You are literally the first mother in the industry that made me feel secure and comfortable in my motherhood as a mm -hmm. sex worker. You remember we met at like uh, I know. In Chicago <laughs> and I was so sad. I was going through it. You know, I was getting a lot of personal um, flack from my kid's dad about what I do. And it was giving me a lot of personal personal turmoil and inner, you know, conflict about what am I doing and all of this stuff. And um, fast forward to now, you know, thank goodness my kid has a really great understanding of sex, sexuality, what I do, gender roles and genders and all of that good stuff. But it was a really um, hard thing for me to deal with at the moment, especially being a new sex worker at the time. Um, so that's one of the things I really want to emphasize to anybody that is a new sex worker. If you are feeling that inner turmoil, um, reach out to other people that you know are parents because we've been through that inner battle and we sometimes are still going through it, but we have things that we can help <laughs> you with in ways. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I just want to say that that was one of the things that I loved about you. Um, so yes. Um, so okay, we kind of went over things like um, 
if anyone has recognized you or what would you do um, if someone recognizes you with your kids? Has that ever happened? Is that something that you are prepared for? Or? Yeah, that, that, that happens to me a lot. What? Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, no, oh, go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Um, I think because we are in a small city and because like I wrote a sex column for a couple of years, like in the city, um, I'm fairly recognizable as like a sex worker, which is, um, like the sex lady in town. Kind of yeah. Thing. Yeah. And that's a weird <laughs> thing because sometimes like, I remember one time I was selling something off of Craigslist and my middle son was with me and we were out in the front yard and the guy who was buying it was like, oh, I know you. And I was like, Oh no, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know you. And he kept asking like, what's your last name? Like he was being very creepy and I knew he knew who I was. And my son was like, what is with that guy? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, men are, men act weird around you is what he said. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. And <laughs> same thing. <laughs> You know, so I try to blow that stuff off, but like I had this happen like at a, one of his games too. I'm standing at like the hockey game and some dad is like orbiting around me and he's like, nice tattoos. Those are recognizable tattoos. I like your tattoos. And I was like, I got it. Okay. Like, you know, like I know you've seen my tattoos. Can you like go somewhere else now? Um, so I think that like, that's been, um, and then I had a woman do that one time too, like in a grocery store, stop me and say like, was talking to me about um, my Twitter presence and what she thinks about my Twitter presence and treating me like I was famous and then didn't know I was with my kid. And then my kid walked around the corner and was like, mom, blah, blah, blah. And then she, but she, she was coming at me in a different way. So she felt really bad. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I thought you were by yourself. And I was like, no, it's fine. They know what I do, but it's hard for me to, uh, in Pittsburgh to not be like recognized. And my kids have just kind of, I don't know, sometimes they come home and they say to PJ, like, did you know mom is famous? Like people stalk her. And I'm like, I'm not famous. This is just a weird town. <laughs> that, that is pretty intense. I'm like, wow, like that, that's a lot of moments of being recognized here and there. Uh, uh, damn. <laughs> that's why we try not to put ourselves out any more than we have to here. Cause it already happens enough. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, I, I'm sorry. Are you going to talk? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think just me being trans, I've learned, like, growing up, just learning how to block out people and, not, and to not worry about what's going around mm -hmm. me. You know, like, I don't pay too much attention about who's staring at me or who's whispering yeah. or because that's how we grew up. You learn you, yeah. to <laughs> grow that skin where you're just like, no, nah, nothing bothers me. I, I don't pay attention to anything other than what I need to focus on, you know? And I do that too, but I think it's friends or family members or the kids, they're the ones that, re that notice like, oh my God, that person's staring at you. Oh my God, they must know you. Oh my God. They, and I'm like, oh, really? Oh, okay. And I'm just like, all right, yeah, whatever. Because yeah. I don't want to sit there and start like, oh, make eye contact. Because then yeah. it's like, oh, hey. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, so yeah, I'm no, like, I know. Oh, then okay. it's like a lineup of people standing <laughs> to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, oh, okay, I know. Stop staring or no, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, yeah. But um. Yeah, I just try not to pay too much attention. Luckily, the people that do recognize me, they'll contact me on social media That's or email. And they're like, oh, I saw you over here, but you were with your friends or you were with family or you were with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to go up to you. And I'm like, oh, well, thank you for being respectful. So, you know, I kind of just talk to them right there and then. Um, but when I'm alone, they approach me it's more like wow you know like I like I like your work or I'm a fan of yours or it's very short but yeah. you know it's not luckily I haven't came across anyone creepy but it's you know I acknowledge them I'm like hey thanks and all right thank you bye you know keep it short but yeah. for the most part I just try not to pay too much attention mm -hmm. to that stuff yeah uh, anyone else have moments of having to deal with that or think about that yeah, I, I like Foxy said, I mean, I've had people contact me on social media and like, hey, I saw you at the grocery store, you know, with your family and like, you know, just, you know, 
my girlfriend was excited or, you know, excited or whatever. I've been out to bars, you know, and people, have, you know, that that's, I, that's okay. You know, I, I appreciate that, that they're respectful, that they wait and so they don't come up to you with my, you know, child and say something, um, you know, and then I also, you know, you know, same thing. Thank you for, you know, being respectful. Like, you know, hope you had a great day, whatever. Um, there's some people in bars that have come up um, and that's a different situation where it's like, you know, hi, you know, nice to meet you. And, um, but really I, I kind of think that I just, I have gotten the stares where you, you know why they're staring at you because they're staring at you yeah. like, <laughs> and, you know, I'll just kind of stare back until they stop. And, um, so I haven't had any really bad experiences, luckily, um, nothing too creepy in person. Of course we've dealt with it, you know, I've dealt with it, you know, not in person, um, through social media and things like that. But, um, as far as, you know, people are generally respectful, I think, um, knowing, you know, that I am a mom and they haven't been come up to me with my child near me. Um, so I've been pretty lucky to avoid that. Mickey, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I've, I've had this, this similar experience of, of people contacting me on like social media afterwards of like, oh, didn't I see you, you know, here? Um, I, you know, I think for, for me, what's kind of also, I think, creates the most anxiety is how, you know, in the like business model of social media of like, let's connect everybody by like using your phone number and the phone number of like, you know, these people that you have in your contact list. That is uh, something that um, in a lot of ways kind of like terrifies me. I've definitely had people, yeah, like pop up of like, do you want to follow this person? I'm like, hell no, but thank yeah. you for showing so I can block yeah, this block person them. preemptively. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I I would I would like for social media to show me like who my friends have blocked instead of who my friends follow like that would be way more helpful for, <laughs> for me. Um, but, you know I've I've had um, you know very few instances where people have not been cool. Um, I you know I, I I live in a major city and so like kind of going out like you know pre COVID, it's like, you know, you go out, people are drinking and some people feel, I think, a little emboldened when they've had a few drinks to be like, oh, I love you and da, 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 da. And you're like, I'm with my family. Um, this is not cool. I don't care if it's Sunday brunch for you. It's, it's Sunday park time for me. Um, and um, I, I think I've been pretty lucky that I haven't had to like, really like people get it real quick when I'm like, mm -mm, this is not the time for you know, this sort of conversation. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, and that's going into my last question, which is, do you think that this job has prepared you in a way to kind of um, be better prepared with your kid about um, privacy and boundaries and those things or less prepared or at an advantage, disadvantage in one way or the, the other, because um, much like Mickey said, I have those same fears when I get a new phone or a new account and it's showing me all the people I know in my real life and like who I should follow. And I'm like, no, I don't want them to see this account. Oh my God, you know? So, I mean, there's things that I, I know we all have to do, but like, do you think that this helps you prepare your kid for their future social media lives? I think, I think definitely, I think talking like being able to like, I mean, it's, a, the technology is always changing. And so we always have to kind of like get on top of it. But I think as sex workers, we're a little bit more like prepared in trying to like get on ahead of that, just in terms of just like protecting ourselves to like, you know, like you remember when your parents couldn't like set the timer on the VCR, it's like, I know where like all the settings on Instagram are because like I have to do that, you know, for myself and, um, I, I think being able to kind of have that that comfortability with like social media because we use it for our jobs and talking about like hey like you know these are the risks or this is you know maybe things that we need to think about putting online or not responding or not uh, giving people certain energy because they say something you know offensive. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I think uh, not just with social media, but I think this job has also given me a lot more <clears throat> um, just, it's just made me better able to talk to my child about things like consent, about body awareness, about what is okay and what isn't okay and what you 
don't have to do this if you don't want to do this and you don't have to hug, you know, uncle so-and-so if you don't want to, whatever. Um, so I think that that's something that, um, I mean, it's, it's also become a larger issue just in our society in general lately, but um, definitely with sex work and being in it for a while now and, and having knowing my own boundaries and limits and be, having no problem voicing them, I think that it has really, that has helped me, me be a better parent to my child um, to be able to have those conversations pretty early on about, you know, what is, a, it's your body, you can do what you would like to do with your own body type, type of thing. Definitely love that. I know the consent thing is a big thing, but I think we have such an acute awareness of like what it actually feels like to negotiate that on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are uh, getting close to the end. Was there any questions from the audience? Um, I think there was one up here. Let me, let me check. Um, oh, do you know if anyone's like, especially teenagers, their friends know about it? Um, I know for my, um, well, they're 13 and they pretty much been in pandemic for the last year and a half. So there's not really much time to just be like, what does your mom do? But, um, I even like wondered if they have those, um, like, what does your parent do days in school? And it's really weird. They just don't do that stuff anymore. Maybe, I don't know, LA is just like, let people do what they do and no, no, no asking questions. <laughs> but I'm curious to know if anyone else has to deal with that. Um, you know, sometimes maybe people's parents aren't nosy, but the kids themselves want to know or whatever, you know? No, I think, well, a lot of our kids are still pretty young, so we haven't gotten to that point, but maybe when they're in high school, yeah, and you know, the internet is still out there and there's all our stuff is still going to be there regardless. <laughs> so maybe at that point, yeah. Um, but again, I try not to stress myself over something that it's not happening now. So I kind of just, when that time comes, then I'll probably think about that. But right now I'm still pretty, pretty good on keeping things private. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the questions that just came up from the audience is what advice would any of us give to uh, fellow parents if they found your own child watching adult videos images or art um like what would we say in terms of i guess you know fantasy and reality or wh what mm -hmm. it is that they're looking at um that that's an interesting question i mean I think my kid is tired of me talking to them about sex at this point. <laughs> She's like, mom, you tell me everything. And I'm like, all right. But I would probably definitely discuss, like, you know, this is entertainment, like stunt work or something, right? Like I always try and liken it to that, to anybody. It's like, it's like Hollywood stunts. They're qualified. They practice. They talk about what they're going to do first. And they're acting. And yeah. It's, it's yeah. not stuff you should just try and do. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You know, like, don't do a Prince Yashio move at home. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if yeah, I could put I... the professor hat on for just one second, I mean, like, statistically, most kids have had sex by the time they're adults, and most kids have watched porn by the time they're adults. So mm -hmm. you better be giving your kids some context for that, right? Like, chant, you are, you know, there's a better than half chance that that your kid is gonna you know need this knowledge before they're an adult so like you best be talking to them as though you know this is going to happen and trying to give them all of the skills and context they need to like make good decisions and have like a healthy understanding of you know mm -hmm. all of, of these issues well sad it looks like we lost foxy on video for a minute but um i love that that added perspective from the professor's point of view i mean we we have like lived experience but you know real knowledge is good <laughs> <laughs> lived experience is definitely real knowledge <laughs> i mean that's one of the things is like yeah i mean all of the the sexual ideas and urges or whatever 
the footprint mm-hmm. that gets laid upon us, it, it starts when we're underage, when we're children ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember the things that that started floating around in my head, um, even just about bisexuality when I was around 10 or 11. So so mm-hmm. these are not uncommon things that are going to happen. And um, yeah, I'm just really grateful for everybody sharing all of their knowledge. Um, let me see. One thing I... Can I add something yeah. real quick? I, I think one thing that I, um, you know, kind of been thinking about as, as a parent is just the, the concept of like media literacy. And I think, um, right, especially like right now, we've had all this kind of like co- conversation about disinformation and like what is a, a credible source. And I think, especially around um, sex work and there being so many strong opinions, how to, you know, think about how do I educate like my child to like, you know, if they see something to really like question, like, where is this information coming? Is this information credible? Can this be like verified? It's like, I feel like, like, you know, this next generation of, of people need to be almost be like amateur journalists in a way to be able to decide like, is this valid? Is this a deep fake? Because I think yeah. all of these things are going to get more and more complex and, um, the more sources of media that keep developing each day, I think it's going to be a a, a real challenge to keep on top of. Mm -hmm. What an interesting point you bring up. And you're so right, because that was one of the things I even had to deal with recently. My kid coming across some information. I was like, look at this website. This is bullshit. Don't be paying attention. This is exactly what I was talking about. And I was like, how did my kid believe this? (laughs) dumb stuff and you're right Mickey it's like we have to actually teach those skills of how to discern from what is like a BS um, deep fake website or what's a credible source of information um so thank you for throwing that out there because I think that's one of the things that a lot of humans need a lot of adults you see like believing things are real in ways and you're just like how did they get to this point and it's like that deeper understanding of how to just even navigate the internet Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think just framing it as like an ongoing conversation. I mean, one of the things our, our middle child is really good at, at this is just coming to us and being like, I found this weird thing. What do you think about it? Right. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. But actually, it's so great because we it gives us the opportunity to walk him through that process mm-hmm. of, you know, just what, what Mickey was describing, like media literacy. Well, how, how do we think about it? How do we make sense of this thing that, that you found? Like, mm-hmm. And, and, and it, that's like a practice. It's not something you can just give a kid overnight, right? You have to like walk them through the steps over and over and over again until they like learn these habits. And, and so I think just like leaving the door wide open, like bring me all the weird shit you find and we'll talk about <laughs> it is like the best you can do because you know, yeah. the internet's full of weird shit and you know, and it, it, it's hard to make sense of. And, and you know, it, even for us, sometimes it's hard to make mm-hmm. sense of, but like, I appreciate that, um, you know, that he's so willing to bring those things to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's know. good. <laughs> So yes, if we have any other last, I don't know, parenting thoughts or ideas or things we want to get off our chest um, to speak into the world as a sex worker, parent, performer person, or share with your fellow um, viewers watching, now would be the time. Yeah, you you know, I had something, uh, an experience that I went through um, with my younger child when he was quite young, about one and a half or so. And um, I was going through, you know, a custody battle um, with his father and my sex work was brought into the picture. And, you know, before it was something that was not an issue with my ex-partner and then became an issue. And so I've actually had a few different, um, you know, conversations with a few different sex workers, uh, parent sex workers that I've shared my experience with. And at the time it was scary and it was terrifying. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna, you know, lose my child. And I know there's been, you know, some pretty big, um, like the Mercedes Carrera, you know, case, and there's different things that have come into the industry that have involved parenting and sex work where it's been used as a weapon against us. And, um, you know, and with my experience, uh, in the end, it really didn't matter. It, what it came down to was, are you able to parent your child and provide what they need? And, and are you a fit parent basically? And I was, you know, told pretty much like, it doesn't really matter what you do for a living as long as you, you know, are not doing this, this, or this, you know, you know, as long as you're providing a safe and sane home 
for your child. It really doesn't matter. So I know that there are um, people that have had to deal with the same issues. And um, it's really unfortunate that it, it it's like that's something that, that they go straight for, you know, where it's many other jobs, they don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. And so that is something that, um, you know, any new, like you were saying, newer, newer sex worker that is also a parent that might be worried about that, you know, um, like Lotus said, I encourage you to reach out to other parents in the industry and, you know, see if they've had similar experiences because a lot of us have, and a lot of us have navigated it and um, have come out the other side. And it's, it does seem very scary at the time, but um you know, it, it, it doesn't need to be, and you can find people in the industry to lean on and to get advice from. Um, so yeah, that was just something I wanted to throw out there. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you for being one of the people that I can turn to. <laughs> yeah, <right now>. of <laughs> course. <That's important. laughs> I was going to say, I find that it's like easy to talk to the kids about like abstract ideas. Like I work in this industry and it's harder with, to explain like the small weird things that happen when you're a sex worker. So like, for example, one of my subs went grocery shopping for me, like I gave them a list, but then I'm putting away all of the stuff after I got it my son's like why did you buy this peanut butter I don't we don't like this like <laughs> and I was like am I supposed to say that like uh, you know a sub went grocery shopping for me and dropped off all of this food like and I didn't give him specific instructions on the brand you know like I'm thinking like how do I explain like where this stuff come from or gifts or you know going to the grocery like going to Costco and buying a cart full of stuff and having my kid be like why do you have so much cash like what, what <laughs> how are you paying for this stuff and so I find that like there's some things like that that make me confront like how much do I want to tell them about the kind of work that I do and like it's very easy on an abstract level and much harder on like a specific level for me at least <laughs> Right, especially when they're seeing the the day to day effects of of, of items coming mm -hmm. in and out. Yeah. I hear you because sometimes, well, my kid especially gets excited when we get packages in the mail, and some I just have to straight yeah. up say, "Nope, <laughs> this one is uh, open later by myself package. You can't." Yeah. No. And then they're like, "Oh, like once I shut it down like that, they're like, oh yeah, I don't want to see.'" Mine. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tend to do that too, or with like pictures. Like they'll say, "Like, oh, did you take a picture of my?" Uh, brother yeah I did here I'll show it to you and then I'll be like go go away until I yeah <laughs> until I get the yeah, one that you want you know yeah. and then they're like okay all right. <laughs> and Mickey any closing thoughts um yeah I mean I I think you know one of the things that I was I was thinking about on this on this panel is that like I've known Foxy and Gia for for years but only recently have I known that they were parents um, you know, it took me a while of knowing them to know that they were parents. And I feel like oftentimes, um, you know, there's this, uh, when you're among other, other sex workers, depending on like the context, sometimes it's, it's having that sort of anxiety about like, oh, am I going to, you know, talk about this with you? And then you're going to feel some sort of way. Does this take away from like, you know, the work that we're doing? And like, um, you know, I, I feel generally, I find that like, you know, sex workers are, we have to do a lot of work on terms of like compartmentalizing of like, you know, this is this space, this is that space. And sometimes, um, you know, I, I find myself like having to like, you know, manage my expectations or excitements about like wanting to share things about like, here, these are the things that are going on in my life and being like, is that okay to like talk to you about this in this context? Um, and I, I think we kind of have to we spend so much time and energy doing it like on the non-sex worker side that sometimes like, um, you know, and I've kind of made that mistake where I'm like, I'm excited because I just had this kid and like, this is really awesome. But like, you don't have that sort of, you know, experience or you're not a parent. And so it's not as exciting to you or that is kind of like, you know, a turn off sometimes for people yeah. in our, yeah. Quite honest. yeah, when you're like, you just asked me how I am today. And I'm like, a little overly excited to talk about like, you know, like, my kid is learning how to walk or, you know, all these sort of, you know, milestones that, um, you know, you kind of like bring into that, that space. And I think that's something that, um, you know, um, but at, at the same time, I think it's, 
it's okay to ask if it's okay. And I think that sometimes that is, um, I think often like that fear about how you're going to be judged carries through like both sides um, yeah. of it. And, um, and oftentimes like, I think our fear is greater than the actual like reality where people are like, yeah, it's okay. Or I'm a parent too. And then like, you know, you both talk about it or you decide, you know, how you're going to support each other in a different space. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it goes in all ways. Like it's not as big of a deal with other parents kind of relating. Um, and even as we were saying earlier with our children, our own children, letting them know and disclosing with them what we do. Um, it seems like if we really prepare them, which it sounds like we all have in those ways about body autonomy, consent, gender, and all of that, they, they're already ready to receive the knowledge of the fact that we do sex work. It's like, all right, anyways, what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just want to say again, like from the bottom of my heart as a fellow parent, thank you for opening up and sharing your very real experiences. Um, people do not understand sometimes how tumultuous life can be as a parent in sex work. And I'm just thankful for you um, making time to share that with fellow attendees and, and anyone that will be watching this later. So yeah, take care of them kids. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, bye again. <laughs>